Hello, bonjour. I'm Elka Whalen, two-time Olympic swimmer and Olympic silver medalist. Well, welcome to the first episode of Olympics Unleashed TV for 2024. And what a year we've got coming up. Can you believe there is only four months to go until the Paris Olympic Games? Now, right behind me, we're today at Sydney Olympic Park. Now, these facilities were built for the Sydney Olympic Games in 2000 and continue to be used for Olympic sport for both training and competition resources. I would like to acknowledge the Wongal people as the first custodians of the land, air and waters now known as Sydney Olympic Park and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples watching today and the 60 known Indigenous Olympians who have represented our country. Today we'll be delving into two Olympic sports, archery and braking. We're also going to speak to some students from Homebush Public School where they'll be having a go with our athletes. With me today is BK, Australia's Olympic sporting mascot. For those of you that don't know, BK stands for Boxing Kangaroo and represents all things of sporting value such as respect, sportsmanship, determination and the one thing Australians know how to do really well and that's never to give up. All right, BK, we've got a big episode planned. Let's jump into some action. Well, here we are today at the Archery Centre and joined by some of the aspiring archers who hope to one day make the Olympic Games. Thanks so much for joining us today. Now, we're gonna be delving into this and know what it's like to get into the minds of archers and how they actually started, which actually makes me think. How did you first start getting into archery? It was pretty much spur of the moment. I was doing a lot of running and netball at the time and just picked up with a bow for the first time and just went with it and eight years later, here I am. So, so natural. Now tell us, how heavy is the bow? So to pick up the bow is about two to three kilos, which is maybe the weight of a bowling ball. But to actually draw the bow back is about, mine's 36 pounds, which is roughly the weight of a small child. So if you think about picking that up a lot of times, that's how hard it is to draw back. Oh my goodness. So you have to be very, very strong, obviously, which leads me into the next question. Talk us about training in the gym. So gym training is, it's a mixture of uh, weight training and uh, cardio training. So it's like running, biking, stuff like that. But we do quite a lot of weights to build up muscle in like the upper body so that we can be able to handle the bows for like a full day's shooting. That makes complete sense. And how do you control your nerves? Well, it's different every time, but most of the time just tunnel vision, just ultra focus and try and block everything else out. Tell us more about the bow. So your bow is made up of a few different parts. You have the riser, which is the centerpiece that everything attaches to. Um, you have your sight, which is what we aim with. We have our stabilizers, which lets us hold real steel out at full draw. And then the limbs, which are doing all the work. And then of course the string and the arrow, which helps propel it to the target. And Kim, tell us about with archery, how does competition work? Yeah, so we shoot 72 arrows at 70 metres, so that's about five school buses uh, back to back. And then after that we go head to head essentially, so the first ranked archer will verse essentially the bottom ranked archer and all the way through to the gold medal match. And if someone was interested in starting with archery, what's, what's one tip that you would give them? I think just have a go, it's all supposed to be fun, so just try it and see how you go. Tell us, how does the weather impact archery? So much. Essentially one millimetre difference in me is a massive difference on the target. So that's the difference between a 9 or a 10. Essentially if it's humid, if there's rain, if there's wind, you've got to really be watching out for it so you can aim off or adjust your sight to make sure you're in the middle all the time. Well, hope you enjoyed learning about the sport of archery and what it entails. Make sure you keep your eye out for archery at the 2024 Paris Olympic Games. BK, I am getting so excited about these Olympic Games in Paris for the Summer Olympics 2024. Now, one way to help spot our Australian Olympic athletes is by their unique uniform. Every piece of the 2024 ASIC Summer Olympic uniform features Australia's green and gold with Indigenous prints throughout it. It is the largest integration of Indigenous prints across any Olympic uniform. So let's check out the recent action of the ASIC's Olympic launch. We are here today to launch the ASICS uniform for the Australian Olympic team for Paris 2024. ASICS has worked incredibly closely with all of our athletes, not only to produce a uniform that looks and feels good, but suits the needs of all of our Olympic athletes.
I'm proud to represent my country on the world stage wearing a jersey that incorporates Indigenous design. I am always proud to pull on the green and gold and I feel so confident wearing this kit into Paris 2024. Wow, weren't they amazing? My goodness, they get better every four years. I can't wait to get my hands on some. All right, it's time to change tack, BK. We're headed over to Breaking to see Rachel Gunn and some of her action, also known as Ray Gunn. We're now at the New South Wales Institute of Sport, also known as N-Swiss, supporting athletes to become their world's best. Now, we have over 450 athletes here across 28 sports. We're now so lucky to be joined by Paris Olympian 2024, Rachel Gunn, also known as Ray Gunn, in the sport of breaking. Oh my gosh, breaking, how cool is that? So cool. I'm so excited that it's gonna be in the Olympics for the first time this year. Now we have so many questions from students across the country wanting to ask you everything from all your moves to how does it work to how hard is it? So are you ready to be interviewed? I'm ready. Woo! So Ray Gunn, Tell us, how did you get into breaking? So it's a funny story actually. So I've been dancing all my life. I did jazz, I did ballroom, I did tap growing up. I love him when you're talking, you're swaying as well. Yeah, we can talk I can't and help it. As soon as I think about dancing, I just start moving. And it wasn't until I met my uh, boyfriend that he got me into breaking. So he took me along to some training sessions, showed me some moves and I just got hooked. What is it about breaking that you love? Oh, it's hard to, hard to narrow it down to one thing. I love the creativity. I love that I can find my own style, my own expression. I love that I can find my strengths. So I love that there's that room for that individuality in breaking. Talk us through the training of breaking. I mean, obviously it's a new sport. So tell us about your training. Yeah, so my training um, means that I focus on the different aspects of breaking. So you've got the top rock, which is the standing aspect of the dance. And then when you drop down, you've got footwork and that's very technical and you really need to work on your technique. You've got power, you've, which are like the acrobatic, gymnastic-y style moves. And then you've got what's called freezes. And that's usually when you hold a difficult pose and hopefully on beat. So you've got to train all those different aspects of breaking. There's a lot, isn't There's it? a lot to master. Plus, of course, freestyling, plus, of course, battling and strength and conditioning, which is why it's so great having this support. Here at ENDS, we're so true. I love those words, battling and freestyling. I know all of you children <laughs> who are watching this know that now. I've got a question to ask. Tell me, what do you think the hardest maneuver is to learn, the hardest technique? Yeah. Power moves are really hard and it's taken me a long time to learn power moves. So for example, I think it's been more than 10 years that I've been trying to get head spins. So different kinds of moves, um, spitting on my head, my legs in different positions, my arms in different positions. So, but I'm getting closer and I'm hoping to bring it out in Paris. And how cool would it be right now, the teachers watching, if we said, hey, get all your students up and head spin. <laughs> no, don't, no, don't, don't, don't do, do it, you don't do it. You need to be an Olympian like Ray Gunn to be able to do that. <laughs> Um, tell us how it's judged, because that must be really tricky. It is really tricky. So essentially a breaking competition, you need to beat your opponent. So it's like it's matches and you need to show that you are better than your opponent across a few different categories. And that includes originality, so your uniqueness, the things that are new that you're bringing, your technique, your dynamics, your musicality um, because of course this is the first time you're hearing the music so you need to show that you are responding and freestyling in the moment and so you've got to show that you're better than your opponent so you go out you do your thing they come out you respond they respond and the judges make the decision make the decision based on that so i can imagine your body behavior your body language when you walk out your confidence which is oh, something that's yes. so important for everyone you know you don't want to come up you want to 
boom, we're on, let's go. That's it, it's all about that confidence. Even if you mess up, you can't show that mm. you've messed up. You're like, you know what? I meant to do that. That's all part of it. You can't even do what I can do. Ooh, look at this, <laughs> that is so cool. And final question, tell us what do you do with nerves? I know everyone, we all get nervous and it's such a normal emotion. How do you handle your nerves? Ah, oh, I always get nervous. I get nervous leading up to a battle the night before, even when I'm standing on the stage getting ready to go out and verse my opponent, I'm nervous. Deep breaths. Deep breaths is the secret and to just have confidence mm. in yourself. Don't overthink it, just believe in yourself and do your best. That's all you can do. Fire question time. Intense. Are you ready, girls and boys? Five quick questions. Here we go. Favorite food? Eggs on toast. Eggs on toast. <laughs> classic, it's it. classic. Push up or sit ups, would you choose? Push ups. Very yeah, nice. Favorite genre of music? Ooh, hip hop. Yeah, you can see what I did there. <laughs> Ocean swimming or surfing? Ooh. I'm not very good at surfing, but honestly, it's so cool. I'd love to be better at it. And you could do some moves on it as yeah, well. I love it. Hair up, hair down. Um, hair down. <laughs> Finally, pizza. Always a big discussion. Are you putting pineapple on a ham and cheese pizza? I'm not. You're not? All no right. to the pineapple. Well, there you go. Next time you have a pineapple pizza, think of Rega. <laughs> I know we will be wishing you all the very, very best in Paris in just four months' time, and all the best with breaking. Thank you so much, Alka. Thank you. Up next, we're gonna have a go at breaking with Rachel Gunn. Well, we have students here from Homebush Public School here at N Swiss. Are you ready to have a go? Yeah! Woo, look at that enthusiasm. Okay, BK, are you ready? All right, let's have some breaking moves. Let's bring on in Ray Gunn. Woo! <laughs> Breaking is a dance style that was created in the 1970s by African-American and Puerto Rican kids about your age. At community jams and house parties, they started breaking. And then it's just continued to evolve and develop over the last 40 years. One of the most important things in breaking is that you've got to have confidence and you've got to have attitude. Breaking is also about having some individuality, expressing yourself a little bit. So what you can also do is make up your own poses. All I'm gonna get you to do is step forward and step back. And then the other leg forward and back. And I'm gonna get you to pose after this last one and pose. Yes. And get ready to pose. Three, two, one, pose. We are gonna get down to the floor. So in breaking, the way that we transition from top rock to down rock or floor rock or footwork is we drop my weight onto my left foot and I'm gonna bring this leg down. <laughs> okay, good. We're gonna bring our right foot under us. Yep, we wanna sit right under it. Left hand down, left leg hook. Let's go back the other side. Bring it back to the front, swap our arms, hook again. Excellent. I'm gonna teach you your first freeze. It's called a baby freeze. Leg out in front, elbow in your hip. Nice, good work. Elbow in your knee. Okay, so you've got to really twist your body to get over. Good. And then slowly reach out as you tilt your body, reach out with your hands, reach out with your legs so your feet are still on the ground. And then your feet lift up just at the last minute. <laughs> 
That was so much fun. Hope you enjoy doing this at home as well. Now for the final part, Rachel is gonna select three students to complete one final challenge. All right. Well, I am so impressed with everything that you did in that first lesson. I think a few of you might be up for a bit more of a challenge. So who wants to challenge me by putting all that together? Oh my gosh, so many. Okay, one, two, three. I've got my challenges. your first breaking class. Hope to see you on the dance floor soon. <laughs> well, that was amazing. Some breakers in the making for sure. That's all the time that we have today for Olympics Unleashed TV. So until next time, we hope you enjoyed learning and discovering about the two new sports. Stay safe, keep active, and we'll see you again in term two. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. 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 Aussie.